we're going to talk about today is being alive, being alive in Christ. We're still in our I Am series, so we're going to talk about uh, I Am the True Vine. So we'll be in John chapter 15, verse 1. It says, I am the true vine. This is words in red, so you know what that means. And my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. All right. That's our, that's our main scripture today. We're going to go back up to verse 1. And Jesus says, I am the true vine. So it's not like the other statements where he says, I am the light, I am the good shepherd, I am the gate. He says, I am the true vine. So already he's put himself in comparison to something else, a different vine that isn't the true vine. Jesus says, the, as Jews, they know what the vine was supposed to be. And Jesus says, I am the true vine. So... Turn over to Psalm 80. We've got to figure out what the vine is, was, supposedly, allegedly. <laughs> Verse 8. You brought a vine out of Egypt and drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, its mighty cedars, with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its wall so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine. So in Psalm 80, the vine is Israel, right? Israel's the vine. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of all stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and he hewed out a wine vat in it and he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What, is more, what more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I'll do with my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make a waste, and it shall not be pruned or hoed. And briars and thorns shall grow up, and I will command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting, and he looked for justice, and behold, bloodshed for righteousness. But behold, an outcry. Again, the vine is Israel. It's the vine's responsibility to produce the fruit. And so that's what we're going to get in today. If you turn over to, back to John chapter 15. We're going to stay there the rest of the time. John chapter 15, verse 1. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. For the longest time, Israel thinks they are the ones that are responsible for producing the fruit. And so they work, and they try, and they try to keep all the rules, and they, and, and they, and they just work themselves to death trying to, trying to do all these things that is the standard of God, and they cannot do it. And they don't produce fruit. And when you don't produce fruit, God created everything to be fruitful and multiply. Everything. And so when they're not producing fruit, that's not the will of God. That's not God's plan. But Jesus says, I am the true vine. It's not even your responsibility to produce the fruit. It's my responsibility to produce the fruit. All you have to do is stay connected to me. 
<laughs> That's it. We make things so complicated and so hard, and Jesus says, you want fruit? Stick close to me. That's it. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, bear fruit. Man. Stephen? Just for an example here, let's say Stephen has a burden. Okay? And so, Stephen, if I say, I will bear your burden, does that mean I'm going to produce another burden and give it and add it onto him? No. No. I said, I will bear your burden. What does that mean? I'll hold it. I got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, so when it says... When it says you will bear fruit, it does not mean that you will produce fruit. Jesus is going to take care of that. All you got to do is stay connected to him and you will get a front row seat to watch it bloom, to watch it blossom. You'll get to hold it. And people will say, wow, that's some, that's some good stuff right there. Yeah. Amen. Jesus is good. God is good. So we're talking about bearing every branch in me that does not bear fruit. He takes away. So for the longest time, even still today, we still have this, a lot of churches still have this mindset that we've we got to produce fruit. We've got we to gotta work. We gotta, man, we've got we to gotta try harder. We've got to read more. You've got you to don't do this. Don't taste that. It's, it's always, and I know I preach about this a lot, but this is, guys, this is, this, is the, this is the thing that we really need to get right here is that Jesus will do the work. All you have to do is stay connected to Him and fruit will happen. Just stay connected to Jesus. That is it. And we just say the same thing over and over, but I don't, think, I don't even think I've fully got it myself yet. I still try to work hard to get things done, and then when everything just completely falls apart, then I'm like, oh yeah, God, I need some help. I can't do anything by myself. And we're going to get to that in just a second. But, but guys, if we can just stop and realize that we don't have to wait for everything to fall apart, we can say... God, I'm going to need your help as I, as I go into this new season of my life. God, I trust you. I know that you're going to produce fruit, and I'm, and I'm just going to hold it. And I'm going to be blessed. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Okay, so that might sound like a verse that says you can lose your salvation. And I know maybe some of you guys believe that you can lose your salvation. I do not believe that you can lose your salvation. I don't, I don't believe that anything, nothing, is more powerful than Jesus. And once He has a hold of me, nothing can snatch me out of His hand. So this verse right here, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. That's a poor translation. Guys, if you, if you look that word up in the Greek, that takes away is actually one word. And that word, I am not good at pronouncing. The Greek word is aero, um, and it means to lift up. Okay, so it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean take away. It just means to lift up. And so when you see it, when you see a vineyard, you'll see all these little trusses and uh, they're actually in shapes of crosses too, which is crazy. So they, they line up down there and the vine and the vine goes across the trusses and it keeps it off the ground because the vine on the ground does not produce fruit. It has to stay lifted up. So the wine dresser, when it says every branch that does not produce fruit, he takes away, it actually means that he, every branch that's not producing fruit, that God comes along, puts it back on the, on the truss so that it will start to bear fruit. It doesn't mean that he cuts you off and that you're no longer a Christian, you're not saved anymore, and God, God threw you out. No, it just means that God's going to come along and he's going to help you. He's going to lift you up. And this is what Jesus did his whole ministry. He went by and he healed everyone. He lifted them up. He gave them life. And after he got done lifting them up and made a difference in their life, then they got to hold some fruit. Yeah. Just because they were connected to Jesus now, fruit just starts to happen in their life. There was a... I I wrote this down, but I can't find it. I'm terrible at having notes. I do better if I just don't have notes. So I do have a note, but I lost it. So I'm just going to go like I usually do. So there was a story in the Bible about ten lepers. 
and Jesus was walking by, and they, said, and they cried out with a, a loud voice, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when it, when it says they lifted up their voice in the Greek, it's that same word, arrow. It doesn't mean take away. It means they lifted up their voice. We, we, just a few weeks ago, we talked about Lazarus. And when Jesus was standing in front of the tomb of Lazarus, it says that he, right before he prayed, he looked up, he lifted his eyes toward heaven. And that's that same Greek word, arrow. It's not, he didn't take, take away his eyes from heaven. He lifted his eyes up to heaven. So that word there, take away, it means lifted up. Amen. That's, that changes everything, doesn't it? And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Okay. So a lot of times you'll hear, hear a sermon about the pruning and they'll be like, oh, yeah, pruning. Uh, sometimes that's terrible. Sometimes that hurts. Some, yeah, it's... I want to give you a different perspective today. Pruning is good. Yeah. Pruning is good because we're going to get we're going to get to hold more fruit. There's going to be more blossoms. We're going to be better looking. I don't know. So there's going to be more fruit though, for real. Okay. So there's going to be more fruit. So we're going to we're going to prune. There's a story in the Bible. It says uh, in Luke chapter nine. Let's go over there. Luke chapter nine. We'll have a little pruning session here. This is how Jesus prunes. By the word. Luke chapter 9, verse 46. It says, An argument arose among them to which of them was the greatest. So Jesus sent them out into their own hometown, which is the hardest place to preach. And they saw fruit. So Jesus put his trust in them. He sent them out. There was fruit. They're still connected to him. And so the power of Jesus flows through them. And, this, and they all come back and they're like, Woo! Yeah, some good stuff happened in my hometown. I bet, I bet what happened in my town was probably better than what happened in your town. It was unbelievable. No way that happened in your town too. <laughs> so an argument arose among them of which of them was the greatest. But Jesus, knowing the reasoning of their hearts took a child and put him by his side and said to them, I like your zeal. I like your excitement. I like it that you saw fruit. But listen, it's not about, it's not about being the greatest. He's the greatest. It's only by his power that any of that happened. Jesus said, whoever receives this child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all is the one who is great. Clip. <laughs> this shoot, this shoot that came off the vine, man, it was, it was from a good thing. From miracles that happened, from people that got set free, people that got healed, all by the power of Jesus. That shoot, it got, it got a little too far out there and Jesus was like, it's good, but... <laughs> See, that didn't hurt that bad, right? Jesus just gave them the word, reeled it back in, and now you're going to produce even more fruit. Because now you're not going to be worried about you all the time, about who is the greatest. You're going to be worried about everyone else, and when you make yourself least, then you'll be great. So this, you're going to produce even more fruit if you just listen to my word. Don't worry about being great. Jesus is great. Amen? Amen. All right. Verse 49. Let's just keep going here. John answered, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he does not follow with us. They come to Jesus like, oh, it's a proud moment. Man, Jesus, we saw some dude over there trying to cast out demons in your name and we put a stop to that, bro. <laughs> Okay, so there's a, lo there's, a, there's a loyalty here. That's, they're, they're loyal to the group. They're loyal to Jesus. Jesus casts out demons. So, hey, we saw some other guys trying to cast out Jesus or demons in your name. So we stopped that. But Jesus said to him, do not stop him. 
For the one who is not against you is for you. Clip. <laughs> now what happens? We don't stop people when we see them doing God's work and more fruit is produced. That's the pruning right there. That didn't hurt that bad, did it? <laughs> Verse 51. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? <laughs> All right, John, come here, hold out your hand. <laughs> okay. I see that you guys are offended because they don't accept me. All right? But I'll take care of that. I'll do that. Don't worry about that. You just keep doing what I'm telling you to do. And so we didn't, we didn't come to destroy life. We came to give life. Come on. <laughs> so that sometimes, man, that our, our zeal, our excitement, our ambition, maybe, maybe it shoots out there too far and Jesus doesn't yell at you. Jesus doesn't punish you. Jesus doesn't beat you. Jesus just says, I like your excitement. I like your ambition. I like that you're loyal to the kingdom. But whip, let's keep it right here. Let's keep it about Jesus. Let's keep it about loving others. Let's keep it about life. Let's just keep it right here. Whip. John chapter 15, verse 3. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. If I came up to a vine and I clipped off everything that was shooting out too far and just... You ever heard it say that I, I cleaned it up? It was looking a little ragged. I, I cleaned it up. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. You're already pruned. We've already been... That's, that's in chapter 9. This is verse 15. I already pruned you. You're already clean because of my word. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I got me a branch. It's not a switch. <laughs> that one's getting a spanking today. <laughs> Guys, when you come to church and you hear a sermon, it should lift you up. You should leave here feeling excited. You should leave here feeling like, man, God is going to use me. God has a plan and purpose for my life. God's given me dreams and visions, and I'm going to start moving toward my destiny. You should, be, you should leave here fired up, ready to further the kingdom of God. Not, not beat down about the things that I've done or my past or, or sin, any of that. Why would you come for that? This is not a switch. <laughs> so I have a branch. I have a branch here. And this is, a, this is a branch off the apple tree out front. Okay? So if you don't know why we have an apple tree planted out front, go to the YouTube channel. Look up a video called I Once Was Lost. Watch that and you'll know why we have an apple tree planted out front. Hopefully that makes some of you curious. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is an apple tree branch. Now, guys, if, uh, if all of us concentrate really hard on this branch right here, can we make it produce fruit? No, I mean, I mean all of us together, can we, can we declare and decree Fruit? That's how Christians talk. Well, I, I declare and I decree fruit on my branch. I confess apples. In the name of Jesus, be apples. <laughs> I 
That's all good, but if this isn't connected to the tree, then all of our words mean nothing. It still is all about Jesus. It's still about all, be, all being connected to Jesus. You know, yeah, I, I mean, I can duct tape an apple to this branch, but that's not the same thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's the only way this branch is going to bear fruit, is going to hold fruit, is if I tape an apple to the branch. It will not, there's no way, no matter what we do, we cannot make this produce fruit. It has to be connected to the tree. I am the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me and I in him. He it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. It's, it's not that apart from Jesus you can do some things, that you can get some things done, that you're going to have a little bit of fruit. No. It's just like this. That's what Jesus... Man, sometimes... I didn't go to seminary, guys. I'm not, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. And sometimes, honestly, I feel inadequate to preach the Word of God. But that's a lie from the devil. But I got, I've got this figured out. Jesus made this really simple for us. And I hope I'm making it really simple for you today that if this is you away from Jesus, you're just a stick. And you can't do anything. You can't do nothing. You can't accomplish anything on your own. There will be no fruit. And after just a little while, you will wither up and fade away. And you will have no life. So this is... This is not something that I had to learn at seminary. This is something I figured out on my own through, through failing over and over and over and trying to do things on my own, trying to do things my way, and it never working. It always withering, always fading away, always dying, every single thing in my life. And then I finally figured out that if I just stay connected to Jesus, everything else just lines up. <laughs> And you don't have to be a college professor to figure that out. Take a look at some of the people in here. Take a look around at some of the, the people who, who had completely nothing, had lost everything, that were dead in their sins, that are now connected to Jesus, and now they're free, there's fruit. Man. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. There is a real hell, guys. There is. It's a real place. And, and someday, if dead, if dead branches are laying all in the vineyard, then it attracts pests, it attracts disease, it, it, it attracts all kinds of things that will, that will infect the vine. And so, guys, there's coming a day. You can't just leave that stuff there. You've you got to burn it. You've got to get rid of that. And someday God is going to get rid of anything that could potentially cause you to sin, cause disease. And we're going to be in the presence of God and everything is going to be absolutely perfect. And everything that's dead is not going to be there. It's going to be burned up and gone. The only way to have life is to be connected with Jesus. Guys, just an awareness of your connection with Jesus will dramatically change your life. Like we talked about before, sometimes we wait till everything falls apart before we're finally like, oh God. But if we can just be aware that we are connected, and we, so we don't, have to, we don't have to fight that hard. We don't have to struggle that long. We have the King of Kings, the creator of all things on our side. And all we have to do is say, hey, I, I need some help. I need you. I, need, I trust you. I need you to be in charge of this. I need you to do this. I can't do anything. So that awareness of your connection, you are connected. If you're in Christ, you are connected. And you, and you will bear fruit. It will happen. If you've fallen down, the devil wants to keep you on the ground. He wants to keep you beaten up. He wants to keep you down there where you're not going to produce any fruit. Let the vine dresser lift you up. 
puts you back up and start to produce fruit again. That's all you have to do. Put your trust in Him. Let Him do His work. There will be fruit.